Hi, welcome back again. And remember, the topic is capacity. And we've looked at network links. We've looked at storage devices. And now we're gonna look at servers and also what I call network devices. Network devices are components of the infrastructure that are used between links to be able to carry information. Like for example, a fiber channel switch or an ethernet switch or a host bus adapter or storage adapter. Remember to use the question comment box if you have questions. The topics in this module is to focus on what makes up capacity from a server perspective. Server processors, for example, and multi-core. The idea of taking advantage of the processing capability of the server by using multiple virtual machines and multiple applications residing in those machines. Then we'll talk about the network devices, the adapters, and the interconnecting infrastructure, and the combined environments that allow us to make up DAS or NAS or SAN or multiples of them. We also have a terminology quiz uh, that comes along uh, with this module. So now let's look at server capacity, what we've been focusing on over here. When does server capacity increase? Well, we've got increased speed and density and numbers. And the car represents the fact that we're dealing with some kind of core speed, the speed at which the processor executes instructions. We have the old car, the, the newer car, but perhaps not the fastest. And uh, here we have the uh, international racing machine uh, representing an even faster core processor. So the basic processor can get faster uh, as technology improves. In fact, we have the old Moore laws that processor speed uh, increases by uh, a certain percentage uh, every 16 months or 18 months. One way is to increase the number of core processors. Here we have a single CPU-based system. Here's a four or quad system uh, that you'll find in a lot of servers today. And it even gets uh, bigger in terms of the number of those processors. So that's one way of increasing server capacity. Increase the number of servers, or excuse me, increase the number of virtual machines inside a server. By increasing the number of virtual machines, we have application function that can take advantage of that core speed. Remember, the core speed, the capacity is there, but you have to find a way of being able to leverage it. When we talk about capacity in terms of bandwidth, we need applications pumping requests onto that bandwidth so that we actually try moving information. You know, having more capacity on the network side is only as good as your ability to be able to use it to load the functionality. And the same goes in regards to the server. Virtual machines are a way of being able to provide that. Whether we're talking about VMware or Zen or any one of a number of the operating system environments that are out there, they're all really leveraging the capacity of the server. We could increase the number of servers. Let's say this is a cluster. We've got four servers in that cluster. They're all communicating with one another to let themselves know uh, that they're there, and if one server fails within the cluster, then another server can take over by moving those virtual machines to another server and by accessing the storage associated with the applications that used to run in machine one or server one, now failed in backup mode, we're running on server two within that cluster. And now the network devices. And by network device, I'm talking about all of the network infrastructure, whether they're gateways or routers or switches or combination devices like routers or swouters, if you will. You may never, not have heard those terms before uh, because I kind of made it up, but it makes sense. Notice that we also have the host bus adapters or the storage adapters that come into play as well. They're considered to be devices that are part of the network infrastructure. 
let's look at that network device capacity. And these circles that I'm showing here would represent ports and ultimately physical transceivers that belong to those ports. We've got the host bus adapter that sits on a server that has processor speed associated with it, that has a certain amount of buffers to temporarily house information that is in transit from host to storage or from storage to host. We have the bit rate associated with the transceiver. Remember, bit rate does not mean speed. Okay. Bit rate means how skinny is the data and how can we leverage the bandwidth. We also can have running on those adapters, because we have a processor, an offload function. Functionality that perhaps used to occur in the server or in the storage controller can now be done in the adapter card itself. Asynchronous from the processes that's taking place. So the CPU cycles that's, let's say, on the server can be used for application functioning. And a lot of the function that perhaps was done in software can now be done in terms of the adapter itself, either in firmware or in ASIC, in hardware. And the services that run in these adapters and in these switches as well. One of the things that's unique about a fiber channel switch is the number of storage network-wide services that are actually running in those switches, like a name service function allowing a host bus adapter to query the server, uh, the switch and say, got any storage for me? And since the switches keep track of all the storage devices through their adapters that log in, and since we have a zoning profile that allows us to be specific as to what a particular server should see, then we can query and get a response as opposed to probing every device that might be out there was the, which was the way we did things back in the legacy storage bus days. Hey, there were only 16 or 15 devices possible. It didn't take that long to check everybody. In this environment where we potentially could have 16 million devices out there, that's not really practical. And we can be single or dual ported in terms of our adapters as well. Often when we're building for a high availability environment, we wanna be able to have redundant or dual pathing come into play. One adapter connected to one switch while another adapter port connects to another. On the storage side of things, we have the storage adapter. Host is HBA, storage is SA. And we've got capacity issues that relate to that adapter as well. We've got processor speed on this adapter. We've got buffering. We've got transceiver bit rate, just as we did on the host. We have an opportunity to have firmware or hardware offload on the storage adapter side as well. And there are services that are requested as well as offered by those adapters, both on the host side and on the storage side as well. And we can be single or dual ported here because we're still concerned about the same kinds of availability issues. You know, continuity management comes into play. Here we have the switch capability. And again, we've got ports that exist on those switches. We've got processing speed. There are fast switches and slow switches. You get what you pay for. We've got transceivers that exist in the ports on the switches that relate to bit rate. And we have a whole series of services that are running in those switches that allow us to be able to implement a fabric-wide set of services that servers, adapters, and storage adapters can take advantage of. When does all the capacity increase? Well, in this case, we've got a piece of information that's about to flow. We have the red information, which we'll call as slow. Now, I want you to watch carefully here because there's an error in this slide. We'll call that slow, and we'll call this fast. Hmm. Well, is that really the way information flows? No, not really. We have to remember that speed does not come into play when we're moving across those links. 
A better picture might be this. While moving, they move at the same rate. Again, while moving, they move at the same rate. The speed of light, or the speed of voltage, if we're dealing with copper cabling. However, in terms of what the processor speeds are here, the amount of buffering that we have available to be able to stage information across the links, the same goes for the switches, and the same goes for the storage array itself, that's going to play a factor in terms of the throughput that will be achieved for I.O. operations that are utilizing this path. Red and green information moves at the same speed, the speed of light. Again, the higher the bit rate, the less of the band that is required to be able to move that information, and the more potential we have for higher performance. So here we have our servers, and they're in different geographic locations. You, know, you can see our, our, our background infrastructure applies here. We've got storage that can be spread around the world as well. And we have the interconnecting network infrastructures. By the way, in general, I'll use a blue for fiber channel, and I'll use kind of a reddish color, yeah, that's what I call red, okay, to represent IP-based networks. And we'll see later on that not only can we have fiber channel technologies, but we can have a combination of fiber channel and IP using various gateway and tunneling protocols to make it appear as though it's one fiber channel network and the switches in those networks are talking to each other, but they're talking transparently through a tunnel that exists across an IP-based network. Maybe an IP-based network that is a wide area network or maybe a metropolitan area network as well. So here we have our complete picture of capacity. Network links, capacity between devices, and between what we'll call clouds. Yeah, cloud storage comes into play here as well as, as cloud computing. When does all capacity increase? Well, when all the pieces of the infrastructure that we just showed. How do attachments occur? Which is gonna be our next subject. Well, that depends upon the plans that you make in terms of connecting servers to storage and for what purpose. We have the idea of direct attached storage, the idea of network attached storage, and the idea of storage area networks as well. From an overall capacity point of view, on the storage side, we'll increase the number of bytes. And on the network side, by making smaller bits, the higher the bit rate, we're decreasing the percentage of bandwidth that we need to use in order to be able to move that skinnier bit. Again, it's not going any faster. It's just that we're using less of the band in order to be able to move that bit. That bit of a byte, that byte of multiple bytes, multiple bytes that might make up the file or the files or all of the data that needs to move, perhaps as a result of a backup operation, or even more importantly, a recovery operation. From a parallel operation point of view, the idea of doing more than one thing at, at a time, striping in a RAID 5 or even RAID 0 uh, level, where we're using I.O. to multiple devices at the same time, as opposed to queuing up a series of I.O. operations to operate on one device. And on the network side of things, doing more than one thing at once, the idea of parallel operations. We talked about the multi-fi or wide port and different lanes of information moving at the same time. Again, if we've got a bunch of information to move and we've got multiple lanes we can use to move them, we're going to increase the throughput of operations that are utilizing that kind of a network infrastructure. Again, what's next is a capacity terminology quiz. So you'll go out to your exercises and quizzes and download that information and see how you can do. Again, we've been studying about capacity. Now let's see what you've absorbed.
by answering a set of quiz questions. That takes us to the end of this module, really this set of modules that address the issue of capacity. If you've got questions, use that question comment box. And again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time when we pick up uh, again the next module.